Anyone that's followed my fishing will know that I am a massive fan of the Stifflink pop-up rig and uh, there's several other names for it, but that's what I call it. Uh, <clears throat> and there's a couple of very, very good reasons for that. Uh, the first reason may not be as uh, important as the other one is that you think it is anyway, but um, it stopped tangles. Um, I can probably tangle an iron bar if I had to cast it out and I've got no idea why maybe it's my style of casting I don't know uh, but the stiff link pop-up solved all of my problems that stiff material that we used uh, to recreate it stopped all the tangles and invariably I use it uh, on a helicopter setup and uh, we'll run through that a little bit later on. The rig itself, although the, um, the components of it have changed over the years, it's still exactly the same, uh, it's set up in the same way, does exactly the same things and uh, there are a couple of little pointers to it. They're a little bit different to what other people do, but again, for me uh, and my confidence levels a very good reason. Now, the first and, and the most important part of it is the pop-up section. Now, I never thought in my life I would ever use a rig tied by anybody else. But there is a little some lady somewhere in the eastern lands of this world who sits down and ties up the short chod rigs. And unbelievably, every one of them is exactly the same length. Something I cannot achieve, with, achieve without any, with, with any regularity. So it's something I've got every confidence in using. They are so well tied. The hooks are so good. Um, you know, they are as sharp as they come. And I've never found, as other people do, it, a need to sharpen any of them. Uh, they're, they're just wonderful hooks. Um, on the hair itself is a little swivel. Now, there's two good things for that. Well, one good thing, really, it means I've got to put less putty uh, down below it when I come out to balance it. It gives a little bit of weight to it. And uh, yeah, it, and it also helps me separate the, the, the hook bait from uh, the actual D-ring it's tied into. I only push the hook bait down as far and leave the bottom of the swivel uh, showing because the bait will swell up in the water uh, and cover up a lot of it and maybe uh, decrease the movement of the, the hook bait itself. It's only a tiny little thing but it's a confidence thing and it works for me. Um, it's tied to my boom section with a free turn blood knot. Uh, it doesn't need any more. I've, I don't really, apart from the other knot at the other end, tie any other kind of knot in any material. People tell me it's the worst thing it's ever happened. Blood knots have uh, survived all the years. And uh, the only thing I'll say is you want to trim it off, but don't trim it off too close when you do that. Trim it. Uh, keep it tight to, to your thumb and when you want to block the end make sure there's a little bit keeps the flame away from the actual hook link the last thing you want to do is touch that slightly and even if you didn't notice it would weaken it I suspect and uh, the last thing you want to do is leave that in a carp's mouth and not in, when it's not in the, back, uh, the bottom of your landing net um, the putty itself then uh, I use putty I don't use um, any any sort of shots or anything like that. It's got to be putty because I want that bait really when I put it in the water to sink about a minute every hour to, to get to the bottom. That's how slow I want it to be. Uh, and using a little bit of plastic on my hook bait and a cork ball pop-up, um, it, it, the, the, I can maintain a level of balance for an awful long time. I'm not one of these guys that wants to cast out, put something different on every five minutes. Once I've cast out, that hook bait is probably going to stay in position for the next 24 hours or unless a carp picks it up. Now, the thing that I think avoids my tangles, most of all, is 30 pound illusion. I absolutely love the stuff. It's so uh, it, pliable almost in your hands. It does what you want it to do. It's got a little bit of curl in it uh, when it comes off the spool, but there's ways that we can sort that out. So that is tied. And when I tie it up, this is the second knot. Tie that one first at the bottom and then a figure of eight knot in the top. What it does is means the boom section comes out straight from the knot. 
Uh, I got told off by our product development manager once that my rigs looked awful because they were bent over like that from the knot. Uh, I did change it, but I caught a 43 pound mirror the next morning, which kind of said it didn't really matter, <laughs> to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, I'm confident with it. And that's what I say to people all the time. It, it's not necessarily um, you know that that catches you to fish. It just fills you with confidence. And, uh, um, you know, and that sometimes is good enough to catch fish. Now, uh, one thing I will say, flexi ring swivels. Make sure when you tie it up, you do it to the smaller end. The big flexi ring swivel is what is gonna go around your line on the helicopter setup. So uh, yes, just make sure you do it the right way around. Now, the next thing for me is to get rid of the, the, the natural bend in, in that material, the illusion material. Um, I mean, it's wonderful stuff, sinks like a brick and it just disappears when it's in the water. Put the thick end through the swivel end, there, because that forms the loop. Don't put the skinny end in because it makes the loop a little bit more, you know, a bit sharper. And you want as much movement from that, vertical movement along the bottom uh, as you can. And the smaller end through the swivel. And then what you need to do, get it in front of you. You ain't got to go mad. Don't try and be like the strongest man in the world or anything. But we're going to pull this really rapidly about 20 or 30 times. Okay, straight, as, well, as soon as I've finished doing that, I'll hold that rig for about 15, 20 seconds and it will be as straight as a die. So don't worry, it loops up a little bit. And what you're doing, believe it or not, somebody told me who's got far more brain cells than I have, what you're doing is heating up the little atoms within that material. I mean, not enough that you'd ever notice. And then hold it. And the heat of that stuff, you know, disturbing them atoms causes a bit of heat, evidently. God knows what I'd be like if I was that brainy. And there it is. Straight as a die and exactly how I want to do it. It throws the, the, the rig away to sink down as far uh, from the lead as possible. And that loop, when that's popped up on the bottom, that loop gives you some vertical movement on the bottom and I think that just gives it half a degree of uh, more movement to the hook. Uh, and it's absolutely perfect. One point to note, I haven't got a loop at the swivel end of the, uh, the the boom section. I can see little point. I see so many people do it, and if they're happy to do it, then, then crack on. But I want a pivot point, and you can see the way that that swivel moves through that ring, uh, and that is all the movement I want at that pop-up, and it will turn and turn all day long. You do not need a loop there. Uh, and I think it detracts from the movement that that swivel creates. It's a, a wonderful pivot point. Right. We tied it up and uh, I always try, although I didn't used to, to try tie up rigs and, and, and to store them. And uh, get the old rig board out. And I've got plenty of them in here to, to show you. Uh, I put them in and you'll see them curled up and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, and through the swivel at the bottom of the, the chod rig and through the hook link swivel, I've got, um, I've got the, 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 the pins in there to keep that as straight as I possibly can. That is really, really important. Uh, and I really do like that because it brings the lead into play as soon as that carp fix up, uh, picks up the hook bait. And uh, yeah, leads are just as good at ho hooking carp as hooks are really, but uh, that's the way that I play it. And uh, yeah, it's worked forever. The other thing I want to talk about and why I do it is actually dipping my hook baits. Now, <laughs> I'm a little bit conscious that, you know, you can stop in a petrol station if you're a smoker. And I've known hundreds of people who don't do the things that I do and they still catch carp. So it might not matter. But for my confidence, it does. Uh, I want to get rid of any nasty nifts. I normally crush up a few of my boilies in my hand, rub it into my fingers before I start messing about with everything. And ultimately, I will use a dip. Now, I'm not the 
greatest fan of over flavored things as much as uh, you know they have become very fashionable i think if you put it in the right place you're going to get a bite anyway if the carb are there uh, but i always put it in there to try and negate any nasty niffs that i may have put on it i'm not going to soak it in there for very long i just dip it around a bit some of it slips up the hook link hang on <laughs> i don't want to get covered in salty squid <laughs> i will uh, smell forever and there it is dripping off of it. I leave that for a little while. And uh, you have some components in there, like the, the braid that, that you've melted down to keep it on. And a lot of that, that will sink down into the boilie, get caught underneath the, the topper on top. And uh, yeah, it, it just adds, well, it's, it's a little bit of attraction okay. I think the way that I've baited an area is, is probably more important but I always make sure I've dipped it uh, before I cast it out. And if I've had to cast a few times, I normally dip it again just to be sure, just to get any nasty smells off my hand. And it works so well. There it is. We'll leave him soaking for a little bit. The last thing I want to cover is how you store them on your rods. I see so many people, they stick their hook bait into a ring on the rod and then tighten it up and pack it away. Well, the, first, the thing that happens is you open that out so it's straight. Uh, and that's the last thing you want to do. Certainly on a summer's day when it's nice and hot or you're driving home with the heater pumping on the way home from a winter session, uh, that will stay straight. You've asked it to be straight. And one other thing, the last thing you want flying about your motor is, or when you get it home, is a bare hook. What I do is put the hook into the large part of the flexi ring swivel. Right, first and foremost, I want to tell you, no matter what anybody says, it does no damage to your barb on your hook whatsoever. It actually sits a little bit further around. But what it does, and most importantly, is keep the curve in that hook. That is ready to use as soon as I get it out of my motor. And the only other thing I do when I'm using helicopter setups, get myself a, a rod band, wrap the lead up well, clip it over the rod, over the top of the rod. And there it is, ready to rock and roll. I can take that anywhere. It's not going to catch on anything. Uh, and my, uh, my, my, my rig is absolutely perfect and ready to rock and roll as soon as I get it out of the car. And sometimes, certainly with the lakes that I fish, where I can get around, sneaking around the margins and that, that can be a great thing. And uh, yeah, again, much of it's about the confidence we have in the things that we do. And this baby ticks all the boxes.